Let us pray. Our gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as we continue in discussion about encountering religious pluralism, may you inspire us, O Lord, and give us wisdom to understand. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Once again, good afternoon and welcome to Ayas Asian Theological Forum. Our presenter today he is Dr. Duni Crisus Chanto, and one of a professor here at Seminary Department. And his article is all about the Javanese and power encounter and experience. So, Dr. The floor is yours now. Happy Sabbath. Uh, I'm glad that we are here. And uh, my title is about the Javanese and power encounter. Maybe you will think that why do you need to know about the Javanese? Yeah. Why the Javanese is uh, very important for me so that I, uh, I present it today? Well, when I'm thinking about this this morning, yeah, uh, I want to give you two reasons. First, Javanese is one of the biggest Muslim tribes in the world in terms of number. Yeah. Because nowadays, nowadays, there are a hundred million Javanese only in Indonesia. And 19% of them are Muslims. I don't know if there is another, uh, another tribe, I'm not a missiologist, maybe Dr. Dyson knows, a tribe yeah, who has uh, more than nine, 90 million uh, Muslims only in, in one tribe. So that's why Javanese is very important. And even in Indonesia, this tribe is not so uh, much uh, get attention. Yeah. And the second reason, I think this is the most important. Yeah. It is uh, easiest to remember. The second reason is, if you know what I'm wearing, this batik. Yeah. And also the officers of AETS, they are wearing batiks. It comes from, from Java. Ah. So this is two reasons why you need to know about Javanese. Yeah. OK, I will read. Uh, actually, I cannot let me do this. Indonesia. Indonesia is a republic which allows its citizens to have one of six authorized religions. It is also known as a nation with the most populous Muslims in the world. However, Indonesia is not an Islamic state. People in this country have varied ethnic, linguistic, and cultural backgrounds. They share certain common worldview themes which have been influenced by Indian, Arabian, and European culture. This makes this nation as a pluralistic society. In addition to this, they have traditional Indonesian worldview comprised of animistic, Islamic, and nationalistic. Among more than, among more than 700 tribes in Indonesia, Javanese is the biggest, which comprises about 40% population in Indonesia, and most of them are associated with Islam. Thus, there is a great opportunity to evangelize Javanese Muslims, even though it is not an easy task to share the gospel among this specific community. 
Generally, they live in one big house or in one compound with their family who are Muslims and it is difficult to cut off this tight relationship. Working among Javanese people so far has limited result compared with other tribes such as Bataks, Mananonis, Ambonis, Timors, and Papuas. Animism, uh, for, uh, like aforementioned, uh, is part of traditional worldview of Indonesian, including Javanese. It means that animistic idea and mysticism are playing important role to frame their mindset. That is why it is important for the Javanese to avoid syncretism, particularly when they accept Jesus as their only savior. In fact, there are some Javanese come to the church, however, they still retain their mystic practices. If it happens with Javanese Christians, moreover to Javanese Islam. Therefore, power and counter sometimes is very important when dealing with such kind of practices. Biblical concepts about power and counter. What is power and counter? And how the Bible deals with this practice. These are significant issues before applying this concept in evangelism. Rick Love divines power and counter as the demonstration of God's power over Satan, primarily in healing and exorcism. The emphasis of this practice is to glorify God. This helps people to better understand and experience God in their life. Jesus did many miracles during his incarnation. Among about 37 miracles of Jesus written in the New Testament, six of them testified about his power encounters, especially related with exorcism. Means that Jesus Christ did this occasionally when it was necessary. However, Closer investigation of his power and counter indicates that these efforts were not showing off about his power. Instead, it was indicating what he can do for humanity when they come to him. Those who were demon-possessed came, came to Jesus or someone brought them to him indicate that Jesus did not intend to show off his power in order they would follow him, but as the response of their request. Jesus did not use miracles as the main objective of his work, but as a necessary thing to support his mission. There were several times he refused to perform miracles, including power and counter. When people were attracted only to this spiritual power and not the main thing that is to accept him as the savior, he stated to his disciple, let us go somewhere else to the nearby villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. Thus for Jesus, power encounter is unnecessary when it is needed to support his mission that is sharing the gospel. Power encounter is to guide people to accept him as the true savior and not to satisfy people's curiosity and greedy of miracle. Power the expression of power and counter in evangelism was propagated by John Wimber. The purpose of this power is that God is glorified through reconciling people to himself. That is why God's power should be seen as a means to an end. It means that the power of God to heal the sick, cast out demons, and perform miracles is not given as an end in itself. Thus, power and counter serve as a medium in evangelism. There are two main ideas among the scholars about how to use power encounter in evangelism. First, they believe that power encounter as an intended tool for evangelism. The supporters of this view think that this practice could be part of their strategic planning to reach out people. The second view is that the power encounter is a necessary medium of God in evangelism, but it cannot be controlled by God's people because we cannot force Holy Spirit doing what we want. Therefore, those belief in the second view consider power encounter could be done if God is willing and seeing that it is needed. This understanding based on the Bible, since it was not all disease and evil possessed uh, Jesus healed when he was asked. 
among the scholars who were great supporters of power and counter as an intended medium of evangelism. Peter Wagner. Wagner counts himself proud to be among those who are advocating power evangelism as an important tool for fulfilling the Great Commission in our day. The reason for him is that it is working. Across the world, the most effective evangelism in today's world is accompanied by manifestation of supernatural power. Even though he recognized that church growth is not always related to power and counter, however, a remarkable increasing church members in Pentecostal and charismatic churches because they are using this method. Some other scholars across the denomination agree with Wagner, such as A. Jean Stockwell, David Peaches, and Tom Forrest. Stockwell, a charismatic, says, to understand the charismatic experience more fully and to see how all of us, whether or not we define ourselves as charismatic, can learn about the empowering, enabling work of the Spirit in Christian mission today. He argues that charismatic associates itself with empowering the Holy Spirit in evangelism. Peaches, an, Eva an Anglican bishop, adds that is a biblical pattern. The church of God will grow wherever there are manifestations of God's power. Tom Forrest, a Catholic priest, confirms this idea that we should seek and expect signs and wonders. He assumes that if signs and wonders were necessary in Jesus' own task of evangelism, how much more so for us. He encourages this using of power and encounter in evangelism. Thus, power encounter as an intended way of evangelism has been accepted as an important tool in spreading the gospel. In spite of the idea of power encounter is becoming familiar among several major denominations, Nevertheless, there is a critical thinking about against using power and counter as an intended way of evangelism. Paul Hebert, a mission legal expert, criticized the postmodern society as returning to animism. He noticed that nowadays, many people have a characteristic like an animist. They more believe in power, not truth, is the central human concern in this world view. Charles H. Kraft also suggests God can use human speech to convey his mighty power. The empowerment of word is not automatically done. There are no magic words or praises. We need to invite the Holy Spirit to come and take charge. We need to let him use us. He believes that Holy Spirit supposes using human being, not vice versa. He also realized that satanic power can also reside in cultural forms such as words and objects. Satan can empower curses and other use of words, physical objects, buildings, and probably other human structure as well. Thus, power encounter in evangelism is important. However, according to uh, Charles Kraft, we need to ask the Holy Spirit to work in every Christian rather than dictates what he should do in evangelism. Despite there are two different views about how power and counter should work in evangelism, but both believe that this is an important gift while Christians are sharing the good news, especially among the Muslim. The following section discusses about the importance of power encounter for reaching the Muslims. Power encounter and Islam. In spite of disagreement among scholars about power encounter in evangelism, however, if God permits it, the gift could help opening the way for introducing the truth to their mind. Rick Love, an expert in evangelizing uh, the Muslims, wrote that power encounters plays an essential role in reaching folk Muslims. What is folk Muslims? They are a group of Muslims who believe in syncretism between the teaching of Quran and local culture idea. Love 
adds, even though that this supernatural experience might be expected in evangelism, nevertheless, it is not the key to the kingdom. He argues that power encounter is an essential key to unlocking doors in reaching for Muslims. He believes this certainly with two reasons. First, since folk Muslims often connect themselves with evil power, thus this practice should be eliminated. Love says repentance in a folk Islamic context must involve both renunciation of occultic practices and deliverance from these forces. He believes that power encounter is a must because they are accustomed to involve in occultic practices and their powers. The Bible says that there are no two masters. Thus, if they believe in Jesus, then they should renounce the other power. The other reason of the need of power encounter among folk Muslims is because this group likes to bind themselves with the spirit through rituals in order to using them for their purposes. Love wrote, folk Islam is a broad catch-all phrase that describes the mixing of formal or orthodox Islamic practices with primitive animistic practices. Animism is the belief that all of creation, creation is pervaded or inhabited by spirits or soul, that all of creation is in some sense animate or alive. People try to influence these spirits by using magic or ritual intended to harness their supernatural power for human ends. This practice involves efforts to appease this spirit, to bring blessings to themselves, or to put curses on their enemies. Those who involve in this practice were bound by evil spirits so that this person need help to be released from this bondage. However, the need of power encounter is not just for the folk Muslim, but even for non-folk Muslim. Why this group also may need this? One of the nature of Islam is that this religion is easy to mingle with local faith. Dean S. Gillen, an expert in reaching the Muslim state, Islam is always shaped to greater and lesser degrees by the local belief and practices of the people it encounters. Flexibility in Islam makes the entrance to be accepted is open wide. Furthermore, Gillian claims that borrowing from and accommodating to traditional religion is a characteristic of Islam. The fluid of Islam with the local belief is one of the strengths to reach the local people. However, it is also at the point of weakness when the identity of this religion became faith since the syncretism is happening. Muslims oftentimes syncretize themselves with animism. Several experts about Islam observe that there are many animism practices, doctrines, and ceremonies in this religion were taken with little or no change into Islamic rituals. William St. Clair Tyndale said that certain doctrines and practices of the Arabs in the days of ignorance which were maintained in Islam are still kept even to current days. The reason why they are still observed is because they believe receiving these practices and understanding from Abraham. As descendant of the patriot, Muhammad considered to not force abandonment of them all, but desire rather to purify their faith and to maintain such ancient practice as he thought good and reasonable. Javanese and Islam. Most of Muslims among Javanese are folk Muslim. Since the beginning of Islam in Indonesia, this religion is not pure Islam. It has mixed with animism. In Java, this kind of Islam oftentimes is called as Javanism. It is closely related with Spiritism, in which magic has assumed the status of a divine institution. Spiritualism and ancestor worship have been adapted. Local people call it as Kejawen or kebatinan, because it contains of syncretism of any religion and practice, including Hinduism, Buddhism, Islam, veneration of ancestor spirits, magic, mysticism, and animism. One of the prominent characters of Javanese is inclusism. They believe that all religions are good. Based on this understanding, they have been 
accepting all religion and still kept their spiritism concept. It, ha it is happening with the Islam in Java. The synthesis of animism, Hinduism, and Buddhism made the Javanese people different because the Islam did not destroy the former religion but mingled to it. Thus, the, inclusive, the inclusivism of Javanese is the reason why Islam in Java is syncretic. The Javanese believe in the ancestral spirit and they indicate this in their daily practices. Javanese practice seeking religious knowledge that call as Nyelmu. There are two kinds of it. First, relate with witchcraft, magic, superstition, and backwards. And the second, associated with Javanese view of wisdom. The latter is seeking the quest for harmony is what being salvation and perfection. These kinds of knowledge usually relate to spiritism. Javanese believe in supernatural power. They called it as Kasektan. Actually, the word Kasektan come from Sanskrit term, Sakti. Sakti is the magical power associated with the Hindu gods and especially with Siva. It is not all people can have this power. Only physically and mentally strong people are believed to be able to possess Kasektan. The Javanese conceive this to be potent energy, which often releases heat, light, or glare. Some people become crazy or even death while looking for Kasektan. Those who have Kasektan usually using a medium that they call it as Pusaka. Pusaka has various forms, such as like this. Yeah. Uh, we call it Chris, Javanese short sword, spear or tombak, handkerchief, and many others. Everything can be as pusaka if they believe it is filled with powerful spirit. It could be used for healing or killing someone. Even though modern Muslims state that any use of magical power is shirk and lead to damnation, most traditional Javanese maintain that the quest for magical power is not shirk because it is not involved the worship of gods other than God. This practice sometimes still prevail when they contend with Christianity. Experience of power encounter among Javanese. There are several power encounter among Javanese that I had. The following, I want to tell you a story, the short story, one of the experiences among uh, at least 10 experiences that I have uh, in the field. The first one, it happened in 2002. There was a Javanese. His name was Budi, not uh, Dr. Budi. He was a student here, not that one. The other. Budi is a generic uh, name in Java. He was a Muslim and looking for someone that could release him from evil spirit. He claimed that he could fly, change a piece of paper, become money, and many miracle things that he could do. He heard that Christians are a loving kindness and individuals, uh, kindness individuals, and Jesus is a powerful God. He came to a Pentecostal church in one purpose, to be released from the evil power. They brought him in the church and prayed. Suddenly, he was possessed by evil power and distracted the church. In another instant, he testified he was brought to an open field by another Pentecostal pastor who time to release the evil spirit. Budi claimed that he brought the pastor flying over the field and threw him in the bus. Since they could not release the evil power, he was desperate. At this time, he heard about Seventh-day Adventist Church that this denomination claims to have the truth. He thought if the church, if the, if the church has the truth, it means they can relieve me from this bondage. He was able to contact one of the deacons in a SDA church at Kartasura, Surakarta, uh, part of central Java province. This is the uh, picture of the church. For one expectation, releasing the evil spirit from him. The deacon thought that he wants to study the Bible and he asked me to go with him. Well, uh, these three persons were studying the Bible, this man could not mention the name of Jesus, even though he tried to. The writer thought he was sick and asking if there is anything can be done to help him. He said, can you release me from the spirit? Fortunately, at that time, there was a cruciate led by Pastor Abdul Majid. 
ministerial secretary of SSD at the time. Yeah. After talking with pastor in this district, one evening after the evangelist meeting, all pastor in that district together with pastor Abdul Majid prayed for Budi. After 45 minutes pray, he could be released from an evil spirit. There was some small orange kernel came out from his mouth. After a few minutes, the president of East Java Conference, Pastor Wagiran at the time, came and felt that there are still an evil spirit resides in him. After short prayer, Budi testified, no, I saw it, that there were some more evil spirits came out. This experience became a testimony in that town that SDA Church could perform the same miracle like their Pentecostal brethren did. But this is only the beginning. At the end of this year, I was transferred to the church where the evangelist meeting was held. This church was also the place where Buddha was set free from the evil spirit. It was in 2003 when there was an evangelistic meeting and there was someone converted. The name is Subakti. And then this man testified to many Muslim, yeah, to many Muslims. And then they come to the church in 2005. There were many visitors came to this meeting under the influence of him. Most of them came from Islam background. At this time, I, I was telling he, uh, I was telling the audiences about the experience of Budi. One of the attendees, Jarod, had the same issue. He wanted to be released from evil spirit who always attempted to control him. After three days fasting and prayer, we met at this church, Ngemingan Church, when I was as pastor. We prayed together and uh, after a few minutes, some waters and blood came out from his mouth. He testified that some years ago, he drank a glass of water filled with sacred message, charm, or spell. After drinking this water, it made him proof of sword and could not be wounded from anything except from someone who is more powerful than the spirit. After the Holy Spirit delivered Jared from the power of evil spirit, he was baptized together with another eight individuals who came from Islam background. Many came and be baptized as a result of Jarod and Subekti's testimonies. Finally, in the end of December 2005, we organized Tebu Iring SDA Church, the first church organized by Central Java Field since it was established in January 2003. It was also the first church in Karang Anyar region where 750,000 people live and 95% of them are Muslims. So the conclusion, well, Javanese is biggest tribe in Indonesia with most of its population are Muslim. The inclusivism, the inclusivism characteristic of this tribe contributes to the syncretism of any religion accepted with animism. It is happening with Islam in Java. There are many Javanese Muslims still practice animistic rituals, including communicating with the ancestor spirit in order to obtain supernatural power for their end. While they're doing this, they permit the spirit to unite with them. Thus, when they connect to Christianity, they need to release these connections. Power and counter sometimes cannot be av avoidable. A worker who is assigned among Javanese, in among Javanese people, should be ready to face this challenge. God can use anyone and any way to fulfill his mission as far as we depend on him. In the case of Karang Anya region in central Java province, in one of the strictest Islam territories in Indonesia, God used power and counter to establish his work. Even though it was not an intended method, but it succeeds to proclaim the power of the loving God who has died to redeem all including the Javanese people. Because the next two years, we have another two years after this experience. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Juni, for your presentation. Once again, I'm so sorry to tell that we have uh, we have no more time to accommodate your questions. And again, we will proceed now to the next presenter. <laughs>